Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, hello. So I've been meaning to make this video for a while, but the past few months slash this entire summer have been just so crazy busy that I haven't had a chance to yet, but here we are. First of all, hi, my name's Kayla. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome for the first time. I'm so happy to have you. Today's video is going to be a recap of our Europe trip. And if you missed that, uh, me and a couple of my friends and my husband went to Barcelona and Paris a couple months ago. You can watch all those videos. I will link them below. But those recently finished posting. And now that we're done with that, I wanted to do sort of a wrap up. I did the same type of video, like the finale type of thing a few years ago when we went on a cruise to Alaska. And I still get comments on that video from people saying it's helpful for them when they were planning. So hopefully this can kind of serve a similar purpose. So in this video, I'm going to go over everything that we did on our trip to Paris, Barcelona, and our day trip to Andorra. And I'm going to share tips and tricks, things that we learned that either would have been really helpful to know ahead of time or things that we picked up while we were there. And I'm going to show you some of my must-have packing items plus uh, the souvenirs that I brought home. So let's jump into it. So I'm going to start at the very beginning, aka packing. So if you watch my packing vlog, you've kind of already seen most of this stuff already. I even ended up taking stuff out of my suitcase after that video. So I ended up paring it down even more. Before we get into that, a major shout out for my away luggage. If it's everything I need, it's as big as you can possibly get for a carry-on before they start forcing you to check it on most major airlines. I love her. She is perfect. You know the deal. Okay, so now for the new stuff. First thing I want to talk about is this anti-theft bag. I talked about this in my packing video. I was so excited to use it and it was absolutely incredible. It came in clutch. This is just the perfect size bag, like day bag to take around in the city. It's not an entire backpack. I don't like traveling with a huge backpack when I'm walking around because number one, I don't like to run on my back. It just feels a little bit less secure and I don't need to carry that much stuff. And if I have room, I'm going to bring more stuff and I don't need to do that. I was able to fit everything I need for the day in this bag every single day, including a pair of point shoes. I like that it's longer and flat so I can put like paper stuff in there. I like to collect like maps and tickets and stuff like that. I'll show you a couple later in the video. It's also RFID safe so you can put your passport, your credit cards in here, not to worry about that. And the color is just so cute. Like it just, if you can't tell, this is really kind of my scheme, so I really, really loved this. Next up, I have a shoe recommendation. I bought these Crocs sandals shortly before the trip, and I ended up absolutely loving them. It has a little platform, so it feels a little bit more fancy than just like wearing a regular sandal. They were a perfect choice for warm weather. I wore them all the time in Barcelona. And I've worn them a lot back home this summer in Seattle as well. They're just so comfy. The only thing is that as you can see, they're a little bulky. So if you pack these, you have to allow a little bit of room, but I think it was worth it. Also since that trip, Sarah also bought these shoes and she loves them too. So another ringing endorsement. Are these comfortable Crocs? Yeah, they're actually really comfortable. I love my Crocs. They're so cute. I have both types I have, so maybe I need more types. Perhaps you need these little sandals. Not an ad. Not an ad. <laughs> okay, the next thing seemed kind of silly, but I'm so happy that I had it. It's this beautiful pink rain jacket. So this is from Colombia. It is super lightweight. It has like this nice mesh inside. We didn't end up using it all that often, but the one day we were in Paris that it was raining all day long, I was so happy that I had it. And all of us got these in different colors, and so we looked really cute together. That's not the point, but like it, it was a nice little added bonus. Next clothing item, and this is really more of a brand than a specific item. I've talked about this so many times at this point. I talked about this in my packing vlog, and I'm wearing a top from them today. This is the built-in bra tops from the brand Classy Network, but this is a black bodysuit that I brought with. I just love this brand so much. So they make all their tops have built-in spots for bra padding and the padding that they make is so much better than any other brand I've ever had. You know how you have like a million of those little like flimsy pads that just like fall apart in the washer and stuff? These are so much more high quality. I actually brought some of the pads to show you what they look like. They're very sturdy, soft, not too thick. They come in different sizes. I don't know if you'll be able to see since it's black on the inside, but like there's a little hole right there that you put it in and then you can just be good, you don't have to wear a bra. I have nothing but good things to say about this brand. I have so many of their things now. I could make a whole video about this. Long story short, I love them. They were perfect for travel and I highly, highly recommend it. I actually wore everything I brought on this trip, so yay me. However, I wore the same makeup every day, so I wore way too much makeup and I did not use any of the hair products that I brought and I never do. And I will continue to make this mistake for the rest of my life. Moving on, next I'm gonna talk about a few of the general tips, tricks, thoughts, things we learned. So first off, a bunch of tips I have about getting around. I feel like one of the things people have the most anxiety about traveling is getting around, especially in other countries. So the first tip that I have is to look up your routes ahead of time. Every night of the trip, Sarah and I would sit down and look at our plans and figure out, okay, we're gonna go from this to this, we're gonna get on this train, we're gonna go on this route, and then we would either write it down or take a screenshot of it or text it to the group. Like we would literally type one, 
get on metro line number three two get off at maria christina station or whatever it's so much better to have your route planned out ahead of time so you don't have to worry about it the next day when you might not have wi-fi my top favorite apps for getting around are google maps and another one called city mapper and google maps i really like because you can download cities or sections of cities to be used offline on your phone super helpful for walking directions because we could pull it up and find our way around the other app is city mapper and i discovered this one a few years ago and i have sworn by it ever since i use it at home i use it on vacation this one lets you look up a route to your destination and shows you the fastest and cheapest way to get there using public transit it even tells you helpful little tips like sit at the front of the train or get off on this side of the station you can even view the transit maps offline so you can check and see where you need to get off or transfer if you forgot to write it down or if you're mid route or something it is an awesome app we used it so much this trip and just in general a general getting around tip, double check your train stations. And you know why if you watched our going to Barcelona video. So kind of related, the next tip that I have is really just good to remember in general while traveling. And that's allow more time than you think you need to get around. I think this was especially the case in Barcelona, but if you're relying on public transit, which you should in Europe, it's gonna take time. You don't know when the train's gonna get there. You don't know if you're gonna accidentally go to the wrong side of the track and you have to go over. Or if you're gonna forget your Metro card and have to buy a ticket when you get there. Or there might be construction on the street that you're on. Just allow yourself some extra time save yourself the hassle of stressing about it and being late and leave a little earlier in the morning and my last tip for getting around is stay near a metro station in paris the metro was massive and there were stops pretty much everywhere so it's not as important there i would say but in barcelona the stations were much fewer and farther between so it's definitely more convenient if you don't have to walk an extra 10 minutes every single day just to get to the train station to start going where you're going in paris our airbnb had a station literally right outside the door and it was so convenient to just walk outside get on the train and start going okay so kind of switching gears here a little bit i just wanted to share two services that we used to book activities on the trip that was very helpful and easy to use and these are get your guide and via tour these are both activity booking sites that have thousands and thousands of activities and things to do and guided tours and all kinds of stuff and you can book through them rather than booking directly through a vendor we use both of these this trip and they were super convenient we use get your guide to book the flamenco show and the dark paris tour and the catamaran cruise actually and we use via tour to book the andorra day trip now don't get me wrong i am not brand loyal when it comes to booking travel stuff like i don't exclusively book through these or something i will happily book through an outside vendor if it's a cheaper price or it's more convenient or anything like that but it was really convenient to have a lot of stuff all in the same place not have to worry about like finding different booking codes everywhere it was just all sort of in one and if you're concerned about staying organized or booking your own trip i think this is a really good place to start and i have affiliate links for both of these i will put them below if you want to check them out next tip i have is something we started doing uh like last year or the year before in general for trips and i am so happy we've started doing this and that's upgrading your airline seats on the way home listen i'm 30 now not to be dramatic but traveling is affecting me in ways that are different than it did when i was 20 and i'm willing to pay a little extra to not be in the cheapest most comfortable seat on the way home after 10 days of non-stop running yourself into the ground we don't do first class or anything don't don't get me wrong <laughs> we are not rich just to like comfort plus or like the 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 one the one up from like standard economy or whatever it's just nice zen for the mind and the body on the way home and i try to always do this on points this makes such a difference so if you have some points to spare why not? And finally, I have one more app recommendation for you, and that is this app called Splitwise. This is an app that you can use to split payments with friends or groups of people. It's really good if you're traveling with others. So like I wouldn't use this on a trip for just me and Chris, but if you're traveling with like a group of friends or family or something, and you wanna make sure everything's split evenly, it is so helpful for that. Essentially, it lets you enter expenses. You can split them up amongst the group. You can split it equally in percentages or shares or specific amounts. It also lets you exclude certain people from transactions. So like if I paid for a snack just for me and Brandon, then I could you know make it so only he has to pay me back and then it tallies it all up for you at the end so you can just pay each other back in one lump sum rather than like five dollars here ten dollars there whatever the only thing that i wished it would do when we were in europe was convert it to euros because that was also kind of annoying to have to like do conversions and stuff i'm pretty sure you can do that in the paid version of the app but i did not pay for the app it's free so i'm just gonna have to keep doing that myself either way super convenient highly recommended i've used it on like three or four trips with other friends since then and it's always worked so well okay so next i'm gonna go through each city individually to give you my tips specific to that place and tell you what we did if you watch the vlogs you already saw most of it so i won't go over every single thing but just a few specific 
things we did. So first off was Paris. I absolutely love Paris. I could spend weeks there. Chris and I are already itching to go back. We just both love that city so much. And we love everything we did there, but here's a few of our favorites. Now in my notes, seriously, the very first thing I wrote down to put in this video is all caps, go to the catacombs. This was my favorite activity from not just Paris, but from the entire trip. It was so amazing. Great for history lovers, people who like interesting tourist attractions, or if you're like me and you like creepy stuff on vacation, it was so cool. And not that expensive either. I would recommend this to anybody unless maybe you're claustrophobic. It is a bit of a tight squeeze in there some places. The thing about this one is that you absolutely must, must, must get tickets ahead of time. When we went, they were sold out for the entire day. And from what I've read, that is very common. So just make sure you mark your calendar and you get those tickets if you want to go. Next thing we absolutely loved was the Dark Paris tour, which we did around Notre Dame. This was so much fun as well. We booked this through Get Your Guide and it was such a good find. Our tour guide was this guy named Leo. He was so fantastic, super friendly and really knowledgeable and taught us so many cool things about the city. He even gave us some tips for Barcelona too. And we all just absolutely loved it and would definitely recommend it. And I'll put a link to that one below as well. Next recommendation, this is for people who want really good Eiffel Tower pics. The best place to go for photos is a place called Trocadero Gardens. It's right across the main road from the Eiffel Tower. You can get perfect views of the tower, but it's high enough off the ground that you don't have like the street level with all the people in the cars in it in the background. This was a spot recommended to us the first time we went to Paris by my friend who's from Paris. It is just a go-to. And speaking of the Eiffel Tower, you might have seen those beautiful nighttime photos of the sparkles. You have limited opportunities for this, so be prepared. So the tower sparkles every hour after dark on the hour for five minutes only. So make sure if you're sitting there waiting, when you see it sparkling, you're ready to snap, 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 because it's only for five minutes. Again, speaking of the Eiffel Tower, I know you probably want to go to the top, but hear me out, there's a better option. I'm a big fan of going to tall buildings on vacation, much to my husband's dismay, who is afraid of heights. But I also want the icon of the city to be in my photos, which is also why I recommend going to the top of the Arc de Triomphe so you can get the Eiffel Tower in your photos of Paris. It's half the price, you get gorgeous views, plus you get the Eiffel Tower in your photos. It is just a win-win all around. Arc de Triomphe makes a great segue into my next tip, which is about the Paris Museum Pass. Normally I tend to be wary about these little city pass type things because it doesn't always seem like a good value. This one was totally worth it and it let us pop in and out of museums as we pleased. It even included admission to Versailles, which more than paid for itself. We definitely got our money's worth and I would definitely check it out if you wanna to go to more than one museum while you're there. On the topic of museums, my absolute favorite is the Orsay Museum. This is our second time there and I would go there again. I loved it. They have so much beautiful impressionist art. If you are a huge art or art history person, the Louvre is also just obviously a go-to. My tip for the Louvre is to have a plan. It is absolutely massive. I don't think I even realized how big it was until I was there. It would take weeks to go through the entire thing, so make sure you prioritize the things that you really want to see. We only had about an hour in there, and we managed to see basically all the greatest hits, Venus to Milo, Mona Lisa, all those. So make sure you plan out this visit so you're not just wandering around. And go through the secret entrance. I didn't know about this but when we went, but I've seen stuff about it on TikTok and I'll link some stuff below about that. It's near one of the pyramids outside and if you go there, you can skip the entire line. And now I know for next time. So next up, I wanna talk about transit. I found it pretty difficult to find information about getting around Paris and what tickets you needed to buy before the trip, especially anything in English. So I'm gonna tell you what we ended up doing. We got our train passes at the airport. We went to a counter and we did this instead of going to one of the automated machines. So we could actually talk to someone who spoke English. And we ended up getting this pass called the Navigo Easy. It's like a flat rate for the initial card and then you add trips based on how many you need or where you're going. So we started out with 10 trips and I think we only ended up having to reload it once with just a few trips. In general, the trains in Paris were super easy to navigate. It was very easy to get around. Everything was very clearly marked, especially if you use an app like City Mapper. Then for longer train rides to places like the airport or Versailles, we got tickets for the bigger train, which is called the RER. And these are just these little guys. And this was just for places that our Metro card would not go to, like zones outside of the main Paris downtown area. These were super cheap and very easy to get ticket to counters as well. Most people spoke English when we asked, and in fact, most people assumed that we spoke English and would greet us in English. Most people I know have this fear that French people are going to be really mean to them, and maybe that is the case or has been the case in the past, but we did not have that problem. Everybody was so friendly to us. Granted, we did stay near the main tourist areas. Obviously, people are more approachable or gonna be looking for people who need help, but I don't know, we didn't have any problems. Now, Chris does speak enough French to get us by if we needed to, like he can order food and he can ask for directions and stuff like that. Just as a general tip, I would say at least greet them in French, ask if they speak English in French. Most of them do and are not gonna have a problem with you, but it's just like the respect and you're not assuming they speak English. I think that's the main thing. So just be polite, be respectful, know enough French to ask, can you speak English? And you'll be fine. Finally, I wanna talk a little bit about the food in Paris. I was a bit nervous for this trip because this was the 
the first time we did a major international vacation when Chris was eating gluten-free. So last time we went, he did not have a gluten-free diet. We didn't have to really think about that, but we were pleasantly surprised with how much gluten-free stuff we found. Multiple restaurants and bakeries were fully gluten-free and there were options at every place we went for special diets. Obviously we looked for this ahead of time. Like it wasn't like we just stumbled into any restaurant on the street and happened to find that they had a great gluten-free selection. No, clearly we looked ahead of time. Also brought Chris some gluten-free bread, so kind. I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of options there were though. Some of Chris's favorites were the pastries from No Glue and the waffles from Yummy and Guilt Free. He literally still talks about these waffles and he said they were his favorite part of the trip. So very much recommended. And then finally, just a few things that are on my list for next time for me, because you know, we're going back eventually. Next time I would love to do the Moulin Rouge for real. We just visited it this time. We just, you know, popped by, went to the little bar upstairs, but I would love to do a show there next time. I'm also dying to see a ballet at the Opera House. I was really happy to go in and see. They have a really cool exhibit with like costumes and stuff all laid out there. And we would have this year, but there was nothing that was on when we were there. So next time that's also definitely a priority. And finally, we'd also like to see a PSG match at the stadium next time. Again, nothing was on while we were there, but next time we're gonna have to maybe shoehorn that in a little bit more. That's enough about Paris, on to Barcelona. So Barcelona was a brand new city for everybody. So we had a lot more to explore. It was completely uncharted territory. We did a lot of cool things. Again, if you saw the vlogs, most of it was there, but here's the highlights. My absolute favorite thing we did in Barcelona was the flamenco show. It was so fun. We booked this through Get Your Guide. We absolutely loved it. And honestly made me want to start taking flamenco. Like I was in there like, should I do this? It was just literally so fun. Definitely go to a show if you can. Another thing I loved was actually the little market that we went to, the Boqueria. It was so cute and there were so many stalls. There was so much amazing food there. As a Seattle girly, I am partial to a good farmer's market and go with an empty stomach because you can really have like a full meal there. Switching gears here a little bit, two things that I liked, but I don't know if I would go back or I would opt to do them differently, I guess, if we went again in the future. The first one was Park Goel. This was a very beautiful space. I'm really happy we got to go and we had lots of cool architecture to look at but it honestly felt like we might have gone at a bad time because there was a lot of construction going on and it had kind of seen better days we also had to go up literally 20 flights of stairs to get there and i don't know if i would have been so into that if i had known that ahead of time honestly it was probably better if i didn't know about it ahead of time because i probably wouldn't want to go okay we just walked up this giant hill and we still have that far to go it's also huge and the map was completely useless literally this is the map it is a picture this is a picture these are very small demonstrations of where these things might be but like no paths nothing anything at all so it was completely useless so i would probably uh do a little more research to that next time the other thing was camp new which is their big soccer stadium this is the biggest soccer stadium in europe so it was really cool to go see and chris and i are very big soccer fans but the thing that was weird was that we had allegedly booked a tour for this day but then something happened where they ended up having a match later that day or something so they couldn't actually give the tour so the person at the gate was like oh you can come back on friday and we were like we already have plans on Friday, we are not coming back. I don't know if that was an issue on our part or if that was like a scheduling thing that came up last minute, but we didn't actually get to do a tour, which was kind of a bummer. We got to look through the little museum, which was cool, but like that wasn't necessarily what we wanted to do. And I also wish there would have been a game going on. I don't think I would go back and do the tour alone or recommend it to anybody unless you're like a huge Barcelona stadium or football fan. It was cool, but I would have liked to have seen a game because that stadium is also freaking huge and I bet the games are so amazing. So in the future, uh, we would go back, but only if we got to see a game there. So let's talk about trans it a little bit. There are a lot fewer metro stops around Barcelona than there were in Paris, so it's even more important to stay near a metro station. We were, had to walk about 10 minutes every day to get to the closest one to us, and just in general the stations were a lot further apart, so it felt like we spent a lot more time walking between things, so we got tired quicker, and it was also hotter there. All these things combined, I felt like I was more tired in Barcelona than I was in Paris. Don't choose this trip to find out that your shoes are not super comfortable. To get around Barcelona, we bought passes ahead of time from this website called Ola Barcelona, and we got these little passes. So these are based on a set number of hours and it starts the first time you use it. So we got the one that was 96 hours and it was perfect. It was just what we needed. So this one's basically like an annual pass. You use it for the first time and then it's unlimited rides until you run out, basically. In terms of people speaking English in Barcelona, I think it was even easier than in Paris. I don't think we encountered a single person who did not speak English. And also very few of them did not immediately clock us and start talking English to us. Obviously the signs are in Spanish and in Catalan, but it, we had no problem getting around. Moving on to food. Uh, my number one tip for all of Barcelona is to get patatas bravas. Thank you to my friends that told me to eat this before I went there. So this is a signature dish from Barcelona. It's potatoes and then two types of sauces, one that's spicy and one that's kind of creamy. It was so good, you guys. It was just incredible. So good to the point where we got them and then we loved them so much that 
every single time we saw them on a menu somewhere else, we got them again. We also had luck finding a lot of good gluten-free restaurants and vegan restaurants here as well. Apparently Barcelona specifically is really good for gluten-free because they have some kind of celiac association. So it's like a thing for them to have really good gluten-free food. So that was very convenient for us. Lots of Spanish food is also naturally gluten-free like paella. So Chris had lots of delicious choices here as well. And his favorites were the paella and the bravas at this restaurant called Potstot. Speaking of, go to Potstot. It was so good. Everything on the menu was vegan and gluten-free. It was our favorite spot in Barcelona. Also, if you like sangria, you can get amazing wine in Spain. And it was like four euros. It was crazy cheap and so good. Finally, I want to talk a smidge about Andorra, which was the day trip that we took from Barcelona and our third country of the trip. There's a couple options here. You can either do a bus trip and they kind of just drop you off at different locations, or you can do the private tour guide, which is what we ended up doing. It is a little pricier, but it was definitely worth it. We had a private guide that drove us to and from Andorra. It's about a three hour drive from Barcelona. And he actually tailored the trip to do exactly what we wanted to do and see. He even stopped for us at the best photo spots and took us to an amazing and authentic little tiny middle of nowhere restaurant we never would have found without him. This is one of my absolute favorite days of the trip. It was so cool and totally worth every penny that we spent on it. I will link the exact tour that we booked below, but if you get a chance to go to Andorra, definitely do it. It was so beautiful. We had a great time. So that is all my tips for the trip. Last thing I wanna show you before I wrap up is the souvenirs that I brought back. Now, I'm not normally especially a souvenir girly. I'm more of like the take pictures type of person. I pack my suitcase as much as I can to the brim, so I don't normally have room for souvenirs. I usually opt for like practical things or small stuff, like magnets are a big thing for me. So with that being said, let me show you what I got. Okay, so at the catacombs, I got this beautiful reusable bag. I love this design so much. It's just so simple and cute. I love a tote bag. So I thought this was just so cute. I'm really happy I got it. I've used it so much already. I also got for my family, I got a couple magnets. In the video, you can see them. I'll put shots right here. I got my parents, the little book one of like little pictures. And I got my siblings all an I skull Paris one from the catacombs. And in Paris, I also made us take a special trip to this ballet store called Repetto. So this can be either a skirt or it can be like a little shawl, a little wrap. And it's just so cute. I've worn ballet class already and I just love it. It's adorable in the beautiful pink color um, and it's so special because I got it in Paris. And in Barcelona, I actually didn't do very much shopping at all. I only got a few things at the duty-free shop in the airport. I got some chocolate to take back on the way home and I also got some paella spices for our friends Alec and Julia who actually went to Barcelona about three months after we did. So it was a fun little like, hey, get excited for your trip. And then as for the free souvenirs, I have all kinds of stuff. I love stuff like this, like the little paper guys. I have maps from places that we went, business cards from like like restaurants we ate at, a little macaron menu from the Lottery store, museum maps, I have Moulin Rouge brochures, all of our transit passes. I just, I love a transit pass. My only thing is I don't know how to store this stuff. I'm thinking of doing like a big binder for each, maybe not for each trip, that might be a little bit much. Maybe a big binder for everything and then like sleeves for different trips. I don't know, I have so much of this stuff. It's literally just like sitting in a pile in my room and I want to like do something with it. So if you have suggestions for how to store your travel sous vides, let me know because I am in dire need. Yeah, so that's our trip. It was so much fun. We had such an incredible time. I kind of can't believe that it's already come and gone. Like I feel like we were building up to it for so long and then it's over. It's crazy. There was a time not that long ago when I was like freaking out and like thinking like, oh, we're never going to be able to travel again. And it was so devastating. And now here we are. And I am already planning our next international trip. So it's just, everything is just so good. And I'm just so happy we got to go on this trip. So that's all I have to share for right now. If you have any questions about our trip or traveling internationally or anything that I talked about in this video, please go ahead and leave them below in a comment. If you've been to either of these cities, let me know your tips or tricks or what your favorite parts were or what you would do again. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, you'll please give me a little thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more travel stuff. I have now two trips to edit uh, since this one, so I'm hopefully not going to get too behind again. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!